We are rolling. Do I have to click continue? Yeah, okay. Okay, welcome to the smartest doctor in the room. I'm your host, Dr. Dean Mitchell. Supplements, which ones are a must and which ones are a bust? That's the title of today's podcast, but we'll be talking even about a lot more things. I recommend and personally take multiple supplements with the hope of boosting my immune system and protecting against inflammation that goes on with aging. But I see many of my patients taking 20, 30, sometimes more supplements that sometimes I, I believe have questionable benefit and are actually quite costly. My guest today, Dr. Ray Schilling, is a Canadian physician who has become one of my favorite medical writers on the app Quora. If you're not familiar with Quora, you should download it on your iPhone. Uh, it's the red little app. And boy, you get a lot of information on many topics. It's funny, just as an aside, I, I happened to get into Quora because I was very interested in cryptocurrency. I, I find it very fascinating. And Dr. Schilling's answers kept on popping up on my feed. And sh you know, sure enough, I got addicted to his answers because I thought they were so succinct, well done. Uh, and again, as I said, became a, a really good source of information for me. Dr. Ray is a member of the American Academy of Anti-Aging, and he has written some excellent books, which I, I've read a couple of them, A Survivor's Guide to Successful Aging, also Healing Gone Wrong, Healing Gone Right. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Ray Schilling to the podcast. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Mitchell. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, I'm interested about a few things. I, I like to always get to people's background a little bit before we get into the medical part. And I know you mentioned this, you know, immediately in your books that uh, you st studied medicine in Germany. And then after finishing medical school, you uh, then emigrated, uh, I, I believe, to do residency in Canada. And then for a while, you did some cancer research and then trans transitioned to family medicine. So could you tell us a little bit about your path and also what led you to this area of like anti-aging and what we call functional medicine? Sure. Um, I wanted to avoid being on call. No, that's a good so that's reason. <laughs> why, that's why I thought it would be good to be in cancer research where you have an eight to nine uh, <laughs> hour drop. But uh, it uh, backfired a bit because I found uh, it was uh, tiring to do um, cancer research. And I was working with mice instead of with humans. Uh, I did that for three years, but eventually I decided I would go back to medicine. I did the cancer research in Toronto at the Ontario Cancer Institute. And uh, I did my clinical training at the McMaster University uh, in Hamilton, Ontario. Sure. Then I had to pass another exam, the, the Canadian state exam, it's called LMCC. And then I went to practice in British Columbia in a town called Langley. It's a suburb of Vancouver, British Columbia. Hmm. Do you mind uh, asking why did you why did you leave Germany to go to Canada? I mean, Germany has an excellent, obviously, medical system and, and medical. It was more personal reasons. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm too too open minded for Germany. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Germany okay. is very no, interesting. Is basically, when I grew up, it was very conservative, mm -hmm. and I didn't fit in. I was too too. You were uh, radical, free wheeling. Basically. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. For German. Taste. Okay. But for Canadian tastes, I fit it in. All right. That's very good. All right. So tell me also a little bit. I'm fascinated how you got involved with Quora. And, um, you know, obviously you've, you, you're you very prolific answering questions every day. I, I think you have several million followers on Quora. And mm -hmm. did that lead to the extension of writing these books? Were, were you, did you write the books first and then you were answering Quora or did you do the Quora first? I'm just I curious. Actually wrote, I wrote the books first and uh, I'm taking, based with this experience, I felt it should get out into public and I sort of stumbled upon Quora. Yeah, and that keep really you busy. Helps. It helps to, for my two websites too. I noticed that people are visiting my websites. It's uh, nethealthbook.com and the other one is called Ask Dr. Ray. Com. Okay, so it's good that patients know that. Um, your writing is extremely succinct, methodical, beautiful illustrations. I'm just curious, how long does it, I, I've answered questions on Quora, you know, in immunology and allergy in, in areas. Um, and, you know, I quickly write out my answer or whatever. You do beautiful illustrations. How long does one answer take sometimes? Does it take a, like an hour or a couple hours? 
Uh, it depends on whether I take an answer that I already wrote on Ask Dr. Ray. Okay. And then you will see it on the bottom previously um, published there and there. Okay. On NetHealth's book, I could take a chapter from NetHealth's book, but I'm looking for an exact match. So that the question has to match what I'm writing. Okay. And I think I'm a better writer than I'm actually in words. Like I'm, I'm a bit nervous when I talk. It's okay. Yeah. No, some people are better expressing in writing. Your writing is very clear. I have to tell you, because you know, I, I look through a lot of things and I, even your books, I, you know, I enjoy reading because, you know, you, you get to the point very succinctly and clearly. Um, so it's really very easy reading, especially for the lay person. I mean, obviously as a physician, I, you know, I have a little bit more background, but uh, I found it even, you know, really interesting. So that's why I want to do this interview with you. All right, let's okay. get into some of the things that you talk about in your books, because maybe again, we can um, explore that because there are very, quote, hot topics in, you know, anti-aging in what we call functional medicine. People are very interested. It seems to be an epidemic. Now, in your book, The Survivor's Guide to Successful Aging, you, uh, in one of your early chapters, talks about metabolic syndrome. Do you think you can right. explain for listeners what, what that means and how you interpret metabolic syndrome? Well, the metabolic syndrome is uh, linked to obesity and being overweight. Okay. Because uh, when you start gaining weight, you also produce a lot of uh, cytokines. And that causes inflammation. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, there's also metabolic changes because you have uh, too much sugar and starch, and that leads to too much insulin production. And that changes the whole metabolism. At the same time, the extra sugar is uh, metabolized in the liver. So that leads to production of triglycerides and uh, LDL cholesterol. The LDL uh, cholesterol is being um, oxidized by sugar, and that makes uh, LDL very aggressive and gets into underneath the lining of the arteries. So that causes heart attacks and strokes. So, so uh, in the beginning of my book, I wrote about uh, the Framingham Heart Study, which is a very important study. It sort of analyzed uh, how all these various factors come together, like it starts with smoking. Smoking is a bad uh, habit that uh, leads to hardening of the arteries, but also to cancer. So uh, all of these various uh, bad influences come together, including the metabolic syndrome. So let me ask you this, unfortunately, to most doctors that I'm aware of, I, I think, do not um, record a patient's BMI. I don't, I mean, you know, uh, again, there are charts right. for this. What, you know, and that's probably where it starts because sometimes somebody could look not overweight, but have a high, you know, uh, basal metabolic index BMI, and that puts them at, at risk. Because I think sometimes it would surprise people. So, what do you recommend? Do you recommend you know patients find it out themselves, and is it just by looking at a chart? Uh, is there a better way to measure that? You know, to know whether really or not you're obese or at risk for um, no, metabolic I have, syndrome. I have electronic scales uh, that I measure all of this. Mm -hmm. Every morning, the first step when I get out of bed, I, I step on the scales. It's an electronic scale. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it measures the body mass index. It measures the uh, weight. Uh, it measures the kilocalories that you produce, that, yeah. that you uh, consume. Mm -hmm. uh, the fat content uh, and the visceral fat as well. Wow. That's a pretty impressive scale. What kind of yeah. scale is that? I, I'm, you know, I, the it's, one that I have at home just tells me you know, how many pounds I am. <laughs> it's a body composition scale. Oh, so that's what you, people have to look for. Is it yeah, very expensive? Can, no, 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 100 to $200. Okay, I mean, it's reasonable. Mine, mine so, has been serving me for eight years or so. So it shows, let's say, if, if you're, uh, I think you mentioned your BMI is around 23 or something, because you seem to be very no, fit. No, 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 it's 21 to 22. Wow. Okay. So you, you get a reading I, I on your BMI it. every day. I mean, you, when you get on the scale, that would change if, if you had a couple of ice creams, you know, and you kind of let your guard down. That's why I'm staying away from ice cream. <laughs> I know. I see everybody loves ice, especially in the summertime and it's hot. It's very hard. Okay. Um, but you can get uh, stevia sweetened uh, yes. ice cream too. Yeah. 
I haven't, found, I haven't found that yet. They have that in, in British Columbia because I haven't seen a stevia ice cream. You mean like from the supermarket or no, from an ice cream no, shop? No, no, in, in Kelowna, there's a guy who does it in Orchard Park. It's a, it's a shopping center. Yeah. And they have, uh, they're selling, uh, oh. it's a, it's a, they call themselves Fortuna. It's a, a nice ice shop. They sell both regular ice cream, but also stevia sweetened ice cream. So you can buy that on the internet or something. I mean, you can have it shipped no, to you. No, 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 no. You buy it uh, in the store. You, you go there. Oh, but are those stores it. all over? The, those stores. I never heard of that store before. There's not it? too many stores. You have to look. It's called uh, Fortuna. For no, no, that's just the local brand here in Kelowna. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, that's the nearest that. town here. Okay. Um, I'm living in the um, interior part of British Columbia. The, ne the biggest town here is Kelowna. Okay. K E L O W N A. Okay. We even have an international airport. <laughs> I meant to ask you, but by the way, stevia. Do you do you feel that that's a good substitute of all of them for you know that it doesn't like they say on the on the on the on the boxes? You know, I buy sweet leaf stevia, which I like. I put it into my coffee okay. and stuff too. Do you think it really has zero glycemic, where the you know it doesn't elevate yes. your sugar? So you do feel yes, it's, it's pretty true. safe. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it has, I wasn't... Been, has been used by the Jap uh, Japanese for about four hundred years. Oh wow! Wow, I didn't know that. That's I thought it was from South maybe, America. I thought it was a South that's American. Why, it's, that's it's why Japanese. Have to swim, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. All right, so let's talk, before we get into the supplements, which I know a lot of patients want to know about. But I, again, I find your writing so excellent. And again, I I've interviewed some really interesting people and met people over the years. I think I mentioned to you before. I I trained a little bit with Dean Ornish many many years ago, and then everybody moved away from the vegetarian diet, then it became very big, the paleo and the keto. And, and I think you mentioned yourself that you're sort of between a pescatarian or you were, and then now a little more vegetarian. What, what's your typical diet? What do you think is the healthiest way to eat the, too? The Mediterranean diet, but uh, not the Mediterranean in North America, but the Mediterranean in villages in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. Like in Greece because or in, Italy? In North America, we eat too much pasta that they, people love to overdo the pasta. Uh huh. We're going to take that out because uh, it turns into sugar and turns into uh, heart attacks and strokes. Well, even like, you know, I interviewed Walter, Walter Longo recently. He said in the, the village where he went from, they eat, they eat pasta. Um, I just don't think the portions that we do, but they eat a lot of green beans and stuff in it. So they, they do have some carbohydrates. So you say not at all? Well, black, I mean, black beans. Yeah. Well, that's, that's okay. That's black bean pasta. Because like it's, that. it's, uh, it has more fiber in it. So it's a, a slower digestion process. Okay. So what, you so what is your you typical glycemic reaction? Okay, so what would be typically like what you would, you know, are, are you are you eating any meat at all or any fish or not anymore? Uh, yeah, I eat some chicken, but eat some uh, chicken? I, eat, I eat hardly any red meat. Okay, and how about uh, fish? I had, I, had and... prostate, I had prostate cancer five years ago. I don't want it back. Okay, and you think the red meat definitely inflames? Uh, red meat has, has some negative effect on it. Okay. Um... Okay. It's a metabolized a metabolite in the gut, which uh, is carcinogenic. Oh, okay. uh, even even the World Health Organization has uh, recognized that last year. You know what I worry about though, like I, you know, and it happened to me, but I've seen it to other patients as well. Like my vegetarian patients, their iron stores and a lot of their minerals are very, very low. Uh, I, and again, this is why we're going to be talking about supplements. But do you are you concerned though that people avoid red meat completely? That you know, no, I'm not concerned if they eat spinach. Yeah, it's, I, sometimes I they have, still find it hard to get their iron levels. Their ferritin levels are usually well below forty. No, I have these. I have mine checked and it's normal. Yeah, all right. So you eat a lot of spinach. Uh, spinach and lentils. Omelet, I like. How about lentils? Lentils too. Uh, if mm. I every couple of weeks, maybe yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the, key, the key is to eat more vegetables and less meat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's. But, more uh, I still, I still like uh, uh, seafood. I like uh, okay. salmon, wild yeah, salmon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people like to enjoy themselves a little bit. It's you know, I think there's this balance, and we're going to get into right. that with the supplements in a minute. Uh, one more thing too. What? How do you feel about the medications? You know, that I had. Um, I was asking, you know, Walter Longo about metformin, even though he's not really involved with that, where David Sinclair and some of the other people here are uh, Dr. Barzilai and Einstein. 
it's a fashion among the anti-aging physicians right now. To, mm -hmm. What do you I'm, think about that? Do you think well, um, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the side effects of it? Uh, you can easily uh, Google that. Yeah, and there's a, a, a rat tail of side effects, and that's not very good. Mm. Okay, so, so I, it's not I like you're a fan. I, I don't like it. I don't take it. Mm -hmm. And what about Lipitor? Do you think most people could do if they really were strict about their diet, they wouldn't be needing these cholesterol lowering medications? Or do yeah, you I, think I, that's a statin? It's not a good idea. You think it's not a good idea? No, look at the side effects again. It's too many side effects. Too many side effects. Okay. All right. Um, so it's better to do it by diet. It's better and to do it by diet. Be disciplined. All you have, all you have to do is uh, switch over, have less red meat, have uh, more vegetables. But okay. I also like to take uh, eat organic vegetables as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And what about cheese? You avoid cheese? That's another. Uh, no, I, I like cheese. <laughs> you don't think that causes increase in fats, triglycerides? Well, you know? A little bit of fat is okay. Yeah. All right. So you like cheese? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it has to be European cheese because I don't trust the U.S. milk. Oh, okay. That's a very interesting one. <laughs> because you don't, like, you don't like our cows. Okay. No, it's a bovine growth hormone. I don't like the practice yeah. of the farmers. Do they, use, do they use it in Canada as well, or no, no, it's illegal. Wow, I know in, we in, just in Europe, too lax. It's illegal too. Wow. Okay, let's get on to vitamins and supplements. That's also I, I find very interesting. You're writing on this. You know, I talk to my patients all the time, as I mentioned. Um, I liked, you know, you wrote in your book and uh, that you view supplements as an insurance policy. You know, it's not a guarantee of obviously super health, but you know, we're all trying to help our own odds. And um, there's a lot of confusion, as I mentioned in the introduction, as to what supplements are beneficial and what's a waste of money. And you break down in your book, um, A Survivor's Guide to Successful Aging, how you go through like five step process of what you think you know, vitamins should cover. So I want to ask you, you know, we'll go through some things. I also see patients who have chronic fatigue, you know, so I'm familiar with a lot of these and I recommend them. But again, I want to talk about how people should take them. And, you know, because I I'm strongly believe in the, the route, you know, not just swallowing pills, but whether it's sublingual, whether it's liquid versus powder is very important. So let's go through your five steps. And I'll, I want to ask you if you feel they're critical or you know how they should be geared. So you talk about the first one, fight oxidative stress. And you mentioned B vitamins, vitamin C, acetyl-L-carnitine, alpha-lipoic acid, L-glutathione. Tell me, what, do you consider that like, like everybody should be taking that or over a certain yeah, age? I, 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 at the end of what you just uh, talked about, uh, I'm summarizing that there is, um, I think five groups or six yes. groups five groups I have here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the key is it starts with the antioxidants. Uh, vitamin C typically is in there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the B vitamins, uh, folate, there's acetyl L-carnitine, alpha lipoic acid. I, I don't take all of them. I take uh, some of them. But the point I want to make is if you take maybe two or three of those categories, they all overlap. So yes. they work all together, like okay. in synergy. The next one is an anti-inflammatory, uh, vitamins with anti-inflammatory action. They're fighting inflammation. Mm -hmm. A big one here is vitamin D3. I take, yes, you're a big uh, fan of that, I know. I take a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you about vitamin D3, because I'm just curious your experience. Like I tell patients all the time, I like liquid vitamin D3 where they put it under their tongue or under the tongue. Because I believe that, you know, when they when people swallow all these pills and then they have to be broken up by the stomach, then it has to go to the liver to be detoxified. So then they only get about 20%. But when you take something sublingual, it's as close to an injection as you can get. Do you, do you have thoughts about that? I mean, do you? Uh, the, I don't take it that way. I, I take uh, capsules, but- You do. I do measure uh, blood tests. Okay. I just had that done last week and I watch it every uh, three, four times a year. Uh, I, I'm a slow absorber. We found that out. My family doctor is an anti-aging physician mm -hmm. in Kelowna and uh, he measured me uh, after I had taken 5,000 units per day and uh, there was not much happening. Right. I didn't absorb much. 
So now I'm taking 10,000 units every day. Okay. And that gives me a level of 50 to 80 uh, nanograms per ml. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good uh, high dose, uh, like a normal high dose. Uh, you want to be in the higher dose, you want to be above 30 nanograms per ml, because otherwise your immune system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've written a lot about that on Quora. You, you yeah, had pretty strong I, beliefs about it helping against COVID. I'm, I'm and thinking a lot of, of writing a book on vitamin D. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Oh, so that's what you're a big fan. What about things like, you know, again, alpha lipoic acid? Like I take it, and I know it's supposed to be good for mitochondria and stuff too. What, do you take that? Do you like that as a, a supplement? I, I used to take it, but I didn't really find a difference. So yeah. I, well, well, so many of these things you don't. It's it's very subtle. So that's why it's so my tricky. Wife, my wife complained that we take so many pills, uh, we have to cut down. And okay. Well, it's costly point, too, right? I mean, you know, I mean, my my bill could be over a hundred something dollars, you know, for all I, the vitamin supplements. And, I spend uh, a lot of money on, on vitamins. Yeah. But your your telomeres get elongated, uh, and you can add about five years uh, of life because of that. That's a Chinese publication. Okay. Yeah, I think so, so many people uh, say too, besides getting living longer, want to also live a better quality of life. So many of us in their 50s, 60s, if you're lucky to 70s or 80s, you know, most people do not age well. We see that. And mm -hmm. I think we're all looking for that secret of how to stay mentally sharp, physically viable, you know, and enjoy our life. You know, you work your whole life to hopefully get right. to a you know a point where you can enjoy yeah. it, right? Not, yeah, not even just retirement. I mean, I I love what I do. I don't I don't know if I'll ever retire, but it's like you just want to be in the game. You want to maybe, maybe you know. we should go back to those uh, uh, five categories. Yes. Uh, the next one is preserving mitochondrial function. Uh, yes. Mitochondria are the energy packages in each cell. Right. Uh, there are thousands in brain cells and in uh, heart cells. And there's sort of hundreds in many other, other cells. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key supplements you mentioned, coenzyme Q. Yeah, coenzyme Q. Co or Co sometimes people want ubiquinone. Which, which do you prefer? Do you like, do you keep, uh, does it matter to you or? It doesn't matter. I buy mm -hmm. CoQ10. Okay. CoQ10, I take 400, in the net, uh, 400 uh, milligrams yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're older, you should have about 400. When you're younger, you're okay with 200. Okay. And you feel that gets into the mitochondria. I know I talk to patients all the time. I, you know, it's interesting. I did a lot of training with someone for chronic fatigue, which I do in my practice. And we do IV vitamins, which I'll get into later. But one of the three or four main th supplements that my mentor, Dr. Teitelbaum, recommended was CoQ10, it was D-ribose, which I don't see you mention that much, and uh, alpha lipoic acid as and acetyl L-carnitine. These were like the four things that he felt were critical to helping mitochondria produce ATP, you know, which we all, I like to explain to my patients is like the, the money of the cell. I mean, the energy of right. the cell. So you, you do feel that's important because we, well, like everything, things go down in our body. I mean, our hormones decrease as we age. Um, I'm sure different mineral and vitamins and the, you know, the, you know, the uh, biochemical processes that go on in our body probably slow down or decrease as we age. Yes. Uh, others are acetyl L-carnitine, alpha lipoic acid, mm -hmm. uh, ginger root extract, ginseng, and selenium. Selenium stimulates the immune system. Yeah. So that's number cate category three. Category four would be prevent insulin resistance. Uh, that's important for people who gain weight. Uh, obviously, they need to cut down their calories, but uh, they can also take supplements. Uh, ginseng is one of them. Green tea extract, magnesium. Those are- You've uh, also put down beta carotene. Now, I know sometimes you say to be careful about vitamin A, and I think you've said in your writings on Quora, you normally wouldn't recommend people take vitamin A because you can get toxicity. So that's again, an example of people have to be careful, right. but beta carotene, do you recommend, I know there's been some controversy over the years about that, whether there's increased lung cancer from it or whether it does anything. Uh, are you a fan or? Uh... I just take beta carotene from uh, my vegetables. You do, right? From carrots or from anything, anything orange. Extra. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't take it uh, separately, like okay. as a supplement. Mm -hmm. How about chromium picolate? Do you think that's a good thing to take? Uh, 
people who like the question now becomes is it too many pills that you're swallowing uh well, what would you say? What would you say is the line? I mean, I I think I have my own line. Like to me, about ten to twelve is enough. You know, I mean, if I I, I try to, that's what I I say to patients is like, you know, you don't want the whole kitchen sink. I mean, whatever to, maybe your medical issue is geared toward that, right? Right. You don't want to hear how many I take. I take thirty per day. Oh, it's no wonder your wife's really on your case. Yeah, but you're up to 35 or so. so but, you know, again, Dr. Ray, done. you know what I, again, I say to my patients, and maybe I'll say to you, like when I see sometimes these people bring in these hard vitamin pills, which right. I think is so hard for the stomach to digest, I'm constantly recommending lozenges, powders, things that are easier absorbed into the system. So you're stuck, because we all know too, our stomach acid decreases as we age. And that makes it, you know, harder to, I think, get the full benefit of the vitamins. That's why, again, I like the sublingual route or on, you know, in the tongue, mm -hmm. the best personally, but, um, and. Uh, so the fifth category is providing membrane integrity. Uh, that's kind of sounds very scientific. Yeah. Uh, but it's an important one. Uh, beta carotene fits in here, garlic. What selenium. about the fish? What about the fish oils? Now you mentioned cod liver oil in one of them and, you know, there's a lot of controversy. I've heard at meetings. Some people say all the fish oils are contaminated, no matter what they say. Other ones say- No, like, I, I, I take fish oil that uh, has gone through a filter, a molecular- Distilled, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How so many, do you, so you take a couple a day? Two, to, three. Yeah. Well, I come from a um, family with a strong history of arthritis. And uh, there used to be a guy in Europe called Dan Dale Alexander, or was he, he, no, he was in the US, I think. Okay. But that's, we're talking about uh, 1940s. Mm -hmm. And he suggested that you should mix fish oil with uh, uh, like uh, orange juice mm. and take that on an empty stomach. Oh, I've heard that for gallstones. I've heard that, you know, some people recommend or olive oil. They take, yeah, right. take that with lemon juice. So yeah. what I take, I take two uh, fish oil capsules in the morning and two at night. So it's a bit of a higher dosage. Mm hmm but uh, my, I don't have arthritis. Did you have arthritis before? Did you have some? Uh, yes, I had, I had a bit. Okay. But I had also arthritis in my spine, which I had treated with uh, laser therapy and uh, stem cell therapy in Europe. Hmm, interesting. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking, I have my feelers out uh, for things that help. Okay. But it's completely, I would say it's alternative medicine. It's not, mm. it's not mainstream. Okay. But it's it's catching on. There's more and more physicians who now. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I think not only that too. The public is demanding, and I know here in the United States, you know, obviously most of the patients that are coming to me right. are interested in holistic medicine, and uh, they. But you know, like anything too, they should be monitored. You know, I mean, sometimes people go to, to quote health practitioners who don't aren't really have a high type of training. Who are recommending a lot of things and right. nobody's checking. I mean, you can get toxic from vitamin D. You can, you can get bleeding if you, you know, if you take too many things that thin your blood. I mean, it's you know, vitamin it's, D toxicity. You need hundred fifty. No, I know it's it's rare, but it, it's happened. I've, I've, it's no, it's, you have to watch out. Also, it's interesting. I had a patient. You had to watch out. They would they were taking way too much vitamin D, like fifty thousand units a couple times a week, and they started to get severe fatigue. You know, I mean, so, I mean, it's rare, but it can happen. No, it's, I don't think it's that rare. It's, uh, people think when a little bit is good, uh, more, a lot is, more better, is better, right? But that, that's a fallacy. Well, because also good. vitamin D, as you know, and you're doing your book, it's, it's a hormone. It's not just a vitamin and we call it a vitamin, but it, you right. know, it has to do with the calcium metabolism. And it know. has, uh, all the cells have, uh, vitamin D, uh, receptors. That's why it's a hormone. Yeah. Uh, but back going back to those five points, the key is to maybe take two or three of each category. Okay. And don't overdo it. Okay. Because they're, they're overlapping. So yes. there's okay. no point in adding more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that thought. But what's, really, what's really important is uh, physical activity uh, every mm. day. Sure. Because that, that, that prevents a lot of disease. Yeah, that's the secret, that's uh, what secret you know to from, living you know a long life. Regular medicine. Yeah. yeah, I think so many times when people like here in the United States, they hear about the paleo diet. They say, oh, these people, cavemen, they live so long. They didn't live so long. They, a lot of them died from infections and other problems. But the thing right. was, they were constantly on the move because this was before 
you know, agriculture and stuff like that too. They were walking probably eight to 10 miles a day, you know, and so that physical meat unless they, 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 they killed it. Right. It was good for a day. It wasn't like they had a lot of leftovers. Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's talk about hormones because you did bring that up. And as an anti-aging specialist, I, you, you seem to, you know, support in your core writings that hormone replacement maybe is underutilized. But my question to you, just so I get an idea, is it safe? I mean, there's been a lot of controversy, you know, with the women with estrogen and progesterone replacement and men, a lot of men all want testosterone replacement, but, you know, there's always concerns about cancer or other issues. What's your thoughts on hormone replacement? Well, um, unfortunately in uh, 2002, they had to stop the Women's Health Initiative. And there was a big trial <clears throat> which was uh, done in the U.S. And they, they were hoping to show that uh, hormone replacement would uh, prevent osteoporosis and would prevent uh, breast cancer and would prevent uh, uh, other uh, diseases. But what happened is uh, they found, they took the wrong hormones. They took synthetic hormones instead of bioidentical hormones. So they proved that synthetic hormones don't work because uh, women came down with breast cancer uh, and women uh, did uh, get osteoporosis despite the estrogen. So it, it sort of backfired. And ever since women have been very uh, afraid of hormone therapy. Right, right. And so they we, have to point, we have to point out that uh, if we're talking about hormone uh, replacement uh, after menopause, you have to, uh, stick to bioidentical hormones. So they are uh, molecularly the same as the ones that uh, she made before the menopause. Different plant substances, right? I'd like to just clarify for our listeners who may not be familiar with it. Bioidentical hormones are hormones that are compounded or made that look very similar to our own hormones versus back in the day, the estrogens that were, were taken from horse urine and stuff like that too. So mm -hmm. they were not similar to our hormones. And right. that's what we believe caused the problems. Because the, the, some of the synthetic hormones have side chains that don't fit the hormone receptor. So they actually block it. And that's what makes you sick. What about testosterone in men? Um, you, know, there's, you know, a lot of these men are getting pellets put in, they got injections, they yeah. got androgel. Men, men, were, men were a lot luckier than uh, women because uh, Back in the 80s, mid 80s, there was still one of the testosterone compounds which had one of those side chains on it, and that caused liver cancer. Right. After that was detected by the FDA, they blocked, they, they said it's illegal, we can't produce it anymore. Right. And ever since, they have been uh, producing testosterone compounds that are easily uh, metabolized. So uh, we really release the testosterone, whether it's injectable pellets or otherwise. But it, it cannot be uh, taken by tablets because of the liver metabolism. Right, right, it can't be oral. You have to, have to give it uh, either by cream or you have to do uh, the injection. And that has been shown to increase prostate cancer or anything like that? I mean, I know sometimes no. it can cause clots. I mean, I've, we've there seen has some been patients. A lot of discussion, a lot of discussion on the internet and everywhere, but uh, uh, the conservative physicians are, are sometimes against supplementations because they think that it would cause uh, prostate cancer. But when you, uh, some of my contributions to Quora, uh, I have described the history of, of uh, where this comes from, the fear of prostate cancer. And uh, it goes back to 1945 to a surgeon who, uh, cut out testicles, uh, thinking that that would help uh, to cure prostate cancer. What he cut out was uh, estrogen production. Hmm. There's uh, estrogen in testicles too. And that's what that effect was. Oh. But ever since uh, that story remained, and it's only about 10, 15 years ago that Dr. Morgan Thaler, uh, a Harvard professor of urology, Mm -hmm. But he, he wrote a book on that and he gave several lectures at the anti-aging conferences in Las Vegas. 
uh, he explained that it's a lack of testosterone which causes prostate cancer. Uh, men are getting prostate cancer when they're older, and it's uh, mm. it, when they get older, they also tend to produce less testosterone. So the key is to spot this point when when you get less testosterone in your blood and then replace the testosterone. What and about have to do. what about DHEA, which is produced, I believe, by the adrenals? You know, it's sort of precursor to testosterone and some of the hormones do you it's a, it, what's this place hormone, yeah it's a hormone out of which you can make testosterone but the problem is that the metabolism is different in every person hmm. so uh, dhea is important for axillary hair growth uh, also for beard growth and a little bit for uh, hair on the head uh, it's also important for energy uh, but if you now take too much of a supplement on DHEA, you have the same problem uh, that we can overdose and you can get side effects from it. So uh, I only take a minimal amount, uh, 10 milligrams of DHEA per day. You do take it. Okay. Yeah, because I'm too old. I'm 76. <laughs> God, you look 15 to 20 years younger. Uh, so I guess the anti-aging stuff is working. <laughs> um, okay. Um, is there any other things that we haven't really spoke about that you, that might, you know, I think we should touch upon, you know, in, in people's overall health? We talked about vitamins. Uh, the, the question is, do you want to discuss vitamin D3 more about COVID-19? Yes. Like, yeah. Like, I would like, yes, let's touch on that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can prevent COVID-19 if you had high enough uh, vitamin D doses. That's, that's the reason why I'm taking high doses of vitamin D3. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting how, how that developed. It, uh, many years ago, it was said that uh, 400 international units per day would be the recommended dose. Right. Because that was the dose that prevented rickets and kids. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, they were convinced that that's all we needed. But for the immune system, in order to have enough uh, vitamin D3, you need uh, not only vitamin D, you need uh, 13 other uh, um, supplements. Uh, shall I quickly go through them or not? Yes, yeah, no, please, uh, yeah. So in order for the immune system to work, you, in the very beginning of the talk, you mentioned that uh, you wanted to make sure that the immune system is strong. Well, in order to make it strong, you have to have 14 supplements. Uh, it's vitamin A, C, D, E, B6, B12, folate. You need the minerals, uh, iron, magnesium, zinc, selenium, and copper. Mm -hmm. And you need omega-3 fatty acids as well as probiotics. So if you have all of those, uh, you have your immune system will, your immune system will be strong. Okay. But the vitamin D is the most important of those 14. And it you, is. Need, mm -hmm. you need to measure blood levels the way I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, your blood level has to be between 50 and 80 nanograms per ML. Yeah, that's rare. And that's rare that I see that. I mean, I have some people that are very conscious of it. Uh, just a quick question too. Any particular probiotic that you favor? It's such a wild west. I always tell patients, people ask me all the time, what's the best probiotic? And it doesn't seem like there's really any one. Do you look for a certain type or? Uh, I buy them from the health food store. <laughs> okay. So you don't have a specific, I, uh, which I particular? Specific one, okay. No, no. Okay. I wanted to it's ask you about one, one capsule a day. Yeah. But I, 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 I'd go for the higher end, like the 80 million. 80, uh, 80 um, billion, probably. Yeah. Uh -huh. 80 billion. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Let me, ask, let me ask you something that really goes back to European work. And actually, you know, it's interesting. There's a doctor who I haven't had a chance to interview yet, Andreas Mikkelsen. He's from Germany, actually. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He wrote a very interesting book called The Nature's Cure. And what he talks about in that book, it's very interesting because I think it's more prevalent in European hospitals. You know, he's a very big proponent of saunas 
uh, of contrast therapy, you know, hot, cold showers, enemas. I was just curious if you have any experience or thoughts on those things. So you're in, talking in... about de detoxification. Essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because the skin can uh, get rid of toxins by sweating. So that, that would be right. the principle of the sauna. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one you didn't mention. It's called chelation therapy. Have yes. You yes. Oh, yes, I have. Yeah, I do IV vitamin therapy in my office. I don't use, I use glutathione and stuff like that too. I know, but there's also where right. they use EDTA. Mm -hmm. I use, uh, I use both uh, glutathione and EDTA. Mm -hmm. um, every two months I, I do uh, um, EDTA uh, intravenous uh, treatment. And what are you hoping that's doing for you? You think that's removing toxins it, from your body? Um, I noticed at one point, a couple of years back, um, it was actually my, my family doctor who, who took some blood tests. He found out that I was too high in copper. Interesting. Okay. And it turned out, I think, that the copper comes from the organic food that I'm eating. You okay. think it's healthy, but they're using um, copper sulfate uh, to, to spray it, to get oh, rid wow. of insects. Wow. And I absorbed that and I seem to be one of those guys who accumulated. So okay. uh, I had a couple of uh, 10, 10 treatments then from a collation uh, doctor in, in town. And uh, I, it, it solved all my problems. I, I had sort of weird, weird symptoms from it. And when that was the treatment was finished, uh, all of that was gone. Interesting. So yeah, now no, I just it's... do it for maintenance. And, and that doctor told me, well, you are a physician. You can do that yourself. And he showed me how to do it. So I do it at home. <laughs> oh, you do your own IV? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, wow. Okay. And my wife. <laughs> okay. The at home stuff. One other topic too with detoxification. What's your feelings about this whole thing with methylation too? Do you feel like you know, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of... You know, in the I, holistic community. I don't community. know what the percentage is, but it's, it's maybe 10, 15% of, of people have methylation uh, defects. It's a certain enzyme defect. Right, the MTHFR, that's the big yeah. one that people get concerned about. Do you, do you so feel they, really they important? They do well, they do well um, with, with supplements. Mm -hmm. um, let me just check that. I have a thing, a frame on that. I thought I can find it, but uh, not. But do you believe that patients should aggressively treat that if they? Well, if whoever they... has that enzyme defect, yes, they should see somebody who knows about it, mm -hmm. and they should uh, get treatment for that. Yeah. One last thing too on the vitamin D three, you know, because I, I read a really good book by Richard. I think it was Dr. Goodman. He was a cardiologist, functional medicine cardiologist here in the United States from South Africa originally, and he wrote a book about K two. You know that you know people taking vitamin D three should also take it with K two. Yes, um, I take I, I take two hundred micrograms per day of vitamin K two, uh -huh. and I take the ten thousand. Uh, because that's supposed to help the bones and help get leach yes, the. Yes, it's uh, very important. It's it's uh, taking calcium out of the uh, arteries and puts mm -hmm. it into the bone. That's where it belongs. It doesn't belong in the arteries. It belongs mm -hmm. in the bone. Okay. Right, because a lot of people, I think, okay, well, that's an example. And, you know, in the United States, it went back and forth. Well, everybody needs calcium support, drink your milk or whatever. And now we're finding that the calcium that people were taking, um, especially supplements, was actually getting deposited in the arteries. So, again, that's something you probably wouldn't recommend patients taking calcium. Uh, personally, I don't, but I take the occasional and acid, there's calcium in there too. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's for stomach acid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the key is that we take the K2 and the D3 combined, like both, because yes. mm -hmm. you need D3 to deposit the calcium also uh, in the bone, not only K2. Right, right. No, but the combination is important. The, I mean, I, I take a liquid supplement. It's called from LiveWise. Uh -huh. It has a it has like 2,000 or 4,000. You can, I mean, it depends how many drops you take of uh, D3 with K2 in it. Because, um, yes. you know, it's hard That's to, fine. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're also a big fan of like herbs, like ginger and garlic. You, you find that really important. People should put that into their food. Like what, I, I like to use it as powders, actually, instead of taking it, it as It comes capsules. from the anti-aging conferences. They, they are 
pretty strong on, on herbs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I'm inherited it from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and any patient that you were interested, you know, I always find that I, I'm a people watcher, you know, and I suppose when I have a patient that comes in, who's like a hundred years old, who's very vital, I'm fascinated right away, even though they've come to see me for some help, I am listening and I'm, I'm inquiring everything about yes. their life. And a lot of them, they've either been very physically active, very mentally active, like where they're very, you know, where they, where they, they were supposed to be musicians or, you know, researchers who are just constantly mentally stimulated and excited about life. Any, and anything usually, that- Usually they are also slim. That's true most of the time, too, you're right. I, have, I don't see too many hundred year old people that are no. heavy. Uh, so you think, it's first the, you think it's first the body and, the, and you're, you're basically saying it's mainly the, um, it's the motor, you know, before you get to the, you know, the, 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 the software, the coding, you know, and essentially mm -hmm. like the, the brain, you know, or even people's attitude. I mean, do you, do you, are you swayed by over the years, you know, people who are angry, mad, sad, depressed, not really living a healthy long life versus if they just have good genetics or, you know, whatever it is, they don't eat a lot. People who live a long time, uh, they are positive thinkers. There was a talk given by Dr. Thierry Hertogi. He's an endocrinologist from Belgium. And he, he's a, an excellent speaker. Uh, he speaks as he has given many lectures at the anti aging conference in uh, Las Vegas, like that's a yearly event. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, uh, he a special talk on people who live uh, longer than 100 years. And he, he analyzed them, like what, what made them live longer. Yeah. And it was the positive thinking, it was being active, uh, it was being watching what you're eating, like a healthy diet. It's basic, basic stuff that everybody can do. Right. I don't know. Sometimes though, there are kind of people who are kind of ornery and not so nice and they live to a hundred also. <laughs> <laughs> that was the exception. <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's better to be nice and have people love you than people hate you. <laughs> That's right. um, oh, yeah, well, so socializing is another big thing. Like whoever socializes well, yeah, seems to get uh, grow older. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know you mentioned too, you took a ballroom dancing later on in life. Are you still dancing or? Yes, uh, we are. Yeah. Are, you good at, are you good at it? <laughs> well, we have private lessons too. So you okay. get better as you get, uh, you practice more. Mm -hmm. And by the way, too, where are you getting most of your information, you know, with keeping up on all of these things and, to, and for your writing? Are you going, are you go to the internet? Are you going to textbooks? I'm just curious, journals, where, what do you... Um, it's uh, it's mostly internet nowadays. Yeah, it's pretty easy to Google yeah. things and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, this has been a lot of fun for me. I and I hope for the listeners. I, as I said, I've been following you on Quora. You know, I I kind of look forward to it when I relax at night, and uh, I'm busy. I'm checking on my crypto information because I love getting smarter on that. Uh, and then your name pops up on my feed, and and I'll see whatever you're you know you're discussing. I feel like I learned something, and I feel good be able to share this with my patients because as we talked about in the beginning there are you know you could spend a lot of money on a lot of different supplements but there are certain key ones as you mentioned vitamin d3 and some of the other ones you've mentioned in your you know in your five categories that make a lot of sense and you know if somebody wants to again quote buy a little bit of insurance of hopefully having a, a healthier life as they get older this is a good choice so uh, right. is it right if we uh Send any of our listeners to ask Dr. Ray on Quora if they shoot you some questions. Are you still open yeah. to uh, sure. doing that? Great. Uh, I've really enjoyed this. I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, to do this. And uh, I hope our listeners um, have gotten value out of this. I hope they also listen to the next podcast coming up next month. I'm actually talking to Dr. Amy Pearl on something very interesting, reactivation of viruses due to COVID or uh Epstein-Barr in, in chronic fatigue syndrome and how important they are in uh, people's health. So anyway, again, Dr. Ray, thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Um, Mitchell. Okay. And if anybody has any questions, please go to my Twitter feed at Dean Mitchell, MD. Take care.